in my domain Got the whole crowd screaming out our name It's a blowout, it's a hurricane It's over before you know it While you're shaking, we're a dynasty In the making, we're the royalty Now we're breaking down the enemy Move over the soldiers Take a swing, I can take a hit Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome here as we continue on the season, getting close to All-Star Race Weekend, believe it or not, here in Season 6 of the NCAA Hershey's Cup Series. Getting ready for race number 9 of the year, and we're here at our second Super Speedway stop of the season. Now, if you didn't tune into the Tax Layer Truck Series or Pizza Deck Series race here in the last couple of days, we are not at Talladega, which is the track that we were originally supposed to be at on the schedule, but... I thought, since we're going to be going to Talladega anyway during the playoffs, why have two trips to Talladega? Why not give another Super Speedway a chance to debut onto the schedule? Maybe we'll like the racing, maybe we won't. If we do like it, maybe it'll be back next season on the schedule. And I'll tell you what, definitely making a clear case for itself, bump draft and Super Speedway. We had the truck race here two nights ago. Unbelievable racing, four wide, five wide at times. Unbelievable finish that came down to pit strategy. We had an great race last night in the Pizza Hut X Series race, which had a long green flag run at the end, and a lot of slower traffic came into play in the outcome of that one. And now we're ready to go racing here with the Hershey's Cup Series ninth race of the season. Couple of drivers lined up on the front row that really would like to go to victory lane. Standing on the pole position is James McLeod in his rookie season back in season four, of course, going to victory lane twice. His most recent win, if memory serves me correctly, was at uh, Charlotte, was it? Yes, it was. Charlotte, a track that we're actually going to be coming up to pretty soon for the All-Star race. Uh, James McLeod, though, it's been almost two seasons since he's gone to Victory Lane. Would love to be able to find Victory Circle here tonight. Alongside of him, Anthony McCrory. Now McCrory, a former Hershey's Cup Series champion, went to Victory Lane last season. If I recall correctly, it was at Bristol. He's yet to go to Victory Lane this season. There's a lot of drivers, big names, that have not yet found Victory Lane this year. Maybe here tonight at a super speedway, it could be their moment to shine. We're going to have to wait. And see, we've got our Texas race winner, Benjamin Miles, lined up up there in third. He'd love to become the first repeat winner this season. And so far, all winners have only had one win so far this season. Drivers, start your engines! The man's given. We're going to let the pace car lead these 42 drivers off pit road around for a pace lap. And while they do that, it's time to give you your top 10 in the point standings coming into this race. Presented to you by Golden Corral. Points leader is Dylan Poteet, second in the points, 20 points back, so he did close up a little bit of ground on the points leader, but that's Joshua Collard. Benjamin Miles comes into this race third in the point standings. Brandon Gonzalez currently sits fourth with Jordan Anderson sitting fifth place. Tim Walsh is in sixth, Trent Dunham in seventh. Eighth place is Kev Shearer, Alex Drayden, who last week Became the first uh, two-time winner this season. I, I made a mistake with I said about Benjamin Miles. Uh, Alex Drain's the only two-time winner so far this year. He's ninth in points. And Jessica Shelton currently completes your top ten. So at this current point in time, Alex Drayden is the first driver to pretty much confirm himself a spot in the chase for the championship. Only time will tell if he will remain in the top 30 in points to have those two wins count towards a playoff position. Now, for most of our former winners, they're inside the top 10 already. There are a couple of drivers that are outside the top 10 in points, though. 15th in the stands is our Daytona 500 winner, Dallas McIntosh, and our Las Vegas winner, Dylan Young, is 17th in points. But all of our former race winners from this season currently sit in the top 20 in points, so right now, they all would have 
locked up playoff spots as they run currently. But there's still a long ways in this season to go. We're not even halfway through the season. So anything and probably everything still can happen. Here we go though, 30 laps of racing here tonight under the lights at Bump Draft and Super Speedway. James McLeod, Anthony McCray, a couple of Chevys. Get us underway, we're green flag racing. Let's roll. James McLeod, the early advantage, that inside line. But one thing that we have seen here is if you can get enough people lined up with you, whether you're in the middle line, the top side, you can make headway on these straightaways. They're already three wide. Look towards the middle of the pack. You'll start to see them go to four wide, which they can hold as long as the two drivers that are in the middle are able to avoid leaning on each other in the corners. And we even saw them for a brief moment hold five wide in the Truck Series race here a couple of nights ago. There you see him already four wide back there. Manuel Hartnett, Kyle Matthews there in the center of it. As Cody Smart and James McLeod drag race for who's going to lead the first lap. Give it to the 12. Just to give you guys an idea of what's going on in the past couple of races here this weekend. In the Tax Layer Truck Series race, we had a total, if I can find it here... total of 20 lead changes among 18 drivers. For the Pizza Hut X-Series race, we had 15 lead changes among 13 drivers. So that's just showing you just how difficult it is to hold on to the top spot. And look at them back there, still leaning on each other there. John Art, Levi McIntyre. Behind them, you got Shane Lake and Benny Watson. They're all leaning on each other. And did McLeod lead that lap? Nope, they're saying that Cody Smart led it, but that was really close, and now here comes two-time winner Alex Drayden to the inside. Would love to be able to pick up his third win of the season. I apologize there for that little uh, spike, that frame race spike. I thought that I had uh, fixed that issue, but apparently not. And now Charles Sanford trying to get to the inside. He's got a nice little look there at the pace car due to my inefficient camera skills. Look at this, four wide for the lead. How often do you hear that at a racetrack? Sanford, Drayden, Smart, McLeod. Give McLeod credit after kicking up to the high side. Oh, trouble! Oh, the big one. Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of drivers in that one. And who won the battle back to the line? It was Drayden. Just barely a splitter over Smart, McLeod, and Sanford. Four 100s. Separated the top four there coming to that yellow flag. But a big wreck striking. I think that's the first time we've actually had a wreck take place in the entrance to the trial well, this entire weekend. And there's a car on pit road already. That's the 26th of Daniel Voiles and his night already over. Got to cycle back to the rear to see who else was involved. Oh, Kat Batson. Running the breast cancer awareness scheme tonight with her Lincoln Continental. I saw Elijah Gilbert get involved. I think he got involved in like a stack up after the wreck where drivers are trying to avoid. Johnny Gardner's got a lot of damage on his Yankees Chevy Camaro. Jessica Shelton, 10th in the points, has got damage on the rear and left side. Trying to see if anybody back here may have some damage. Looks like maybe a little bit of damage on the 24 of Benny Watson. Little buckle on the hood, little rear end damage as well on his Chick-fil-A Chevrolet. Not sure what Kev Shearer's doing, our real race winner. I don't see any visible damage on him. Cole Baker's got some left side damage, so he got involved in it in the 18. Leon Alvarez has got some right side damage as well. Leader's going to come down pit road. They're going to get their pit stop done, and we're going to quickly step aside to take a look at a replay because they'll be going green next time by Alex Drayden leads the field to pit road. He's currently your leader under caution, the first caution of the evening at bump drafting. I think the wreck's going to take place somewhere in here. Watch in the middle line there, the 55, that black GMAC Chevy of Shane Lake and fellow rookie Benny Watson to his outside. That might be where the contact takes place. Oh, yeah, right there. Shane Lake just kind of ran Benny Watson out of room. They collect up Johnny Gardner and Cole Baker. Another car back there got turned around. I can't tell. Is that 
Benjamin Miles? Yeah, I think it is. Dylan Poteet's caught up on that high side. Oh, man, what a shot for Daniel Voiles further up. We'll get to that incident closer towards uh, the front of the field in just a minute. Oh, looks like Kev Shear was involved. Chris Dodd was behind this. Kyle Keith, Dylan Poteet as well. Or, I'm sorry, that's not Kyle Keith. That's Zachary Fitzwater in the 59. Looks like they got through it relatively clean. Let's get another angle at this wreck first, and then we'll jump up to the follow-up wreck involving Shelton and others. Let's go to our TV2 camera, see if we can get a better look at this, and who just exactly were involved in this clump of drivers. You're going to see, if you watch carefully, right there is where the 55 crowds the 24. And they're going to come right into your living room. Look at this camera view. Maybe some damage there. A little bit of contact for the three of Brooke Allen. Now let's uh, now look at the 0-2 of Jessica Shelton, who I think was uh, the one that, trying to avoid the initial wreck, started a second wreck further up. And you'll see right there, yeah, I don't know, I think it was Gardner came down into Shelton. Shelton made some contact there with Kyle Matthews as well. And look at that shot by Daniel Voiles up there on the right side of your screen. There's Elijah Gilbert getting collected. Oh, there's where Kev Shear was involved, so he did get some damage out of all that. And then we're watching for the 70 of, of Kat Batson. There she is. Who does she hit? Is it the 98? Gilbert trying to get the car turned back around and turned right into the path of Cat Batson. Looks like Voyle's evening is done. Cat Batson's evening is done, and we may have a couple more drivers in the garage area as well. First caution of the evening takes place on lap number four, coming to the completion of lap five. Let's go back to green. Alex Drayden won the battle off pit road, so he will indeed restart as the race leader. It looks like Jordan Anderson's team was on the ball. They got him off pit road in second. Third place got to be Levi McIntyre. Fourth place looks like is John Arndt, potentially. I'm not certain. Looks like they got to get themselves lined up here. Cody Smart, James McLeod there on the bottom of the track. Not sure where they're supposed to be. Oh, we have not had a stack up because Kyle Keith got a lot of front end damage now. And Daniel Gilbert, or not Daniel Gilbert, man, Dallas McIntosh has got rear end damage. And this is a weird looking start. What the heck are they doing? Green flag's going to come back in the air. A couple of drivers on pit road still. Some leaving. Benny Watson, Jessica Shelton, both with a lot of damage. And Kev Shear also just leaving pit road. That's the one difficulty about this type of race. When we go green, we go green. It's immediately after the pits are open. So if you spend a long time on pit road, it's bad luck for you. Shelton and Watson going to come back on the track almost right in front of the leaders. Actually, I think uh, Daniel Gilbert nearly ran to the back of the 0-2, trying to merge back onto the track. That just split the field up into this lead group of six. We should mention that we do have two drivers officially out of the race. They are Kat Batson and Daniel Voiles, so... Tough points night for both of them. Both of them having a bit of a struggle to the year. And it's not seeming to get any better. Daniel Voiles came into this race 34th in points. And Kat Batson came into this race 41st. Cody Smart out in front though. John Art was second. Now there's a battle between himself and Levi McIntyre. And we'll see this race, if it goes into a long green flag run, we'll see these drivers kind of split up and then get back together again as they start to encounter slower machines. See, we had a lead group of six, and now Brandon Gonzalez, Joseph Srigley, JT Bryant, they're all starting to catch back up. There's Tim Walsh. Bryant's got some rear end damage on the 22. Joshua Collard and Sean Galligan, a couple of Brits. Jay Reynolds there, along with uh, Dylan Young. There's Trent Dunham, the defending champion, trying to catch up. 
It's like Jessica Shelton, Benny Watson on pit road again. It's like they got the, the O2 fixed up a little bit more there on the hood and it's like they're gonna be multiple laps down after yet another pit stop, this time under green flag conditions. There's the points leader coming into this race in the middle of this pack, Dylan Poteet, as they're about to swallow up Trent Dunham. And this is a bigger pack than the lead group, so if they continue their momentum, they're going to very quickly reel in the front of the field and we're gonna have a big pack of race cars once again. Not a bad size pack here in the lead pack though, is now Walsh, Collard, Galligan, Swrigley, Bryant, They've all caught back up into this group. A drag race to the line there. Levi McIntyre gonna lead that lap. This were a couple seasons ago. This would be a battle between teammates, but Levi McIntyre, of course, running for Metal Maniacs Motorsports now. Gets still some support from Young Motorsports, but uh, in his own single car team. And now Tim Walsh to the inside looking for the position. Tim Walsh after a terrific run last week now finds himself sixth in the point standings. And like I said, after his win at uh, Sonoma, looks very much like he could possibly be a title contender this year. Three wide for the lead. Now Sean Galligan to the inside line. Galligan, a couple of weeks ago, was up just outside of the top 10 in points. We were talking about him being kind of a sleeper, but then things just started falling apart for him. And now he finds himself 25th in the point standings. Trying to find his first trip to victory lane here this season and looking very strong right now. Of course, last week we saw Alex Drayden pick up his second win of the season, but we also saw Brandon Gonzalez pick up his first win of the season and first win ever for a Nissan Altima in Hershey's Cup Series action. He's up here in the middle of this pack team right there in the middle of Joshua Collard and Levi McIntyre. And speaking of Collard, I mean, he's a former winner this season at Bristol, trying to become a two-time winner this year in his rookie season. They've caught up to two slower machines, Kyle Keith and Johnny Gardner. Which line's going to move is the question as they try and work their way through. Looks like it's going to be Collard using the inside line. He's going to easily move past everybody to the race lead. And now it's three wide, now to double wide between Swrigley and Bryant for second. Nope, Tim Walsh gonna battle on that high side. But JT Bryant, rear end damage, still up to speed, running well. As Collard continues to show the way. Now Collard's win this season came at Bristol Dirt. This is not a dirt track, this is a super speedway, but Looking very strong as they're about to catch another slower machine. That's the 34 of Kev Shearer, and they're going to split him. Whoa! There may have been a little contact there between JT Bryant and Kev Shearer. I don't know. How about the Fords up here? We've only got one Ford victory this year. That coming at Las Vegas, courtesy of Dylan Young. But you've got Cody Smart, Levi McIntyre, JT Bryant, and Joseph Strigley. A lot of blue ovals up here at the front of the field. Drop back here, this lead group might not want to look behind them because here comes that second group being led by Chris Dodd and they've got themselves pretty well lined up in a good single file formation. Chris Dodd is currently, I think, somewhere around the 13th position, I want to say. Yep. And they're doing a pretty good job cutting their way through traffic. Leading Zachary Fitzwater, Kyle Matthews, Dylan Young, Dylan Poteet. Dilly Dilly. Keith Batson's in that group. Joshua Sakuli and Emmanuel Hartnett. They're going to have to get around Kyle Keith and Johnny Gardner, though, before they can get up here to this lead group, who has now caught Elijah Gilbert, and that's really slowing up a couple of drivers. Brandon Gonzalez, mostly. Let's look at this. This is, I believe, a battle for the race lead. Three wide. Cody Smart, John Arndt, and Sean Galligan. Cody Smart on the outside line is going to get the spot as now Leon Alvarez will be in the way. Ooh, Galligan getting forced into the middle right behind that slower machine courtesy of Alex Drayden. That really killed his momentum, but now Galligan gets the outside of the 08 and Drayden is left pinched on the bottom. 
talked about Sean Galligan being called one of those quiet drivers. I think you could call the same for John Arndt. He's 17th in the points, make that 16th in points coming into this race. Been very quiet, been very consistent, kept himself in the top 20 in the stands and looking to try and capture his third career Hershey's Cup Series victory. His first, of course, coming back in season four at Kansas and then of course last season during the playoffs he went to victory lane and that was at uh, Riki Raceway which is a super speedway. Oh a lot of traffic up ahead to deal with now. Benny Watson, Dallas McIntosh, Jessica Shelton. This is really going to split up the field for sure. Who's going to be able to maneuver their way through this traffic the best? Smart's going to go high. Galligan's trying to go up the middle. Gonzalez trying to go low. Which line's going to move? They're boxed in behind McIntosh and Watson. And Alvarez on the bottom trying to get his lap back. Look at John Art. His teammate in the 24 playing a little bit of defense there. And that's going to get John Art to the race lead. But now the inside line's getting some forward momentum. Brandon Gonzalez, oh, Gonzalez left Leon Alvarez to go up top with John Art now dives back to the bottom. And look at the wad of cars back here now. That group that we were talking about with Chris Dodd, Dylan Pote, Kyle Matthews, Fitzwater, they've all caught up now. But they're all gonna get wadded up back here. Oh boy, this is, this is not a good place to be. Ooh, leaning on each other, Joseph Srigley and Chris Dodd. Dodd trying to get around the 24 as they're all just trying to slice and dice their way through traffic. Back up towards the front though, it's a battle for the lead on between Brandon Gonzalez and Joshua Collard, a couple of drivers that have won at dirt tracks here this season. And believe it or not, we're only just past the halfway point of this race. There's still a long ways to go and with the fact we've run green up to this point, the potentiality these drivers are gonna have to make at least one more green flag pit stop before the checkered flag waves. Boy, who led that lap? They say Gonzalez did. Collard going to move to the lead now using the inside line. Here comes a former Hershey's Cup Series champion and Kyle Matthews. Matthews looking for his first win since I believe season four. If I recall correctly, he went all last season winless. He did, failed to make the playoffs, finished 32nd overall in the standings, certainly trying to bounce back from that. As McLeod, who started on the pole, he's going to now try and go back to the race lead. Faded back for a bit, and now back up here to the front. Now three wide. Here comes Kyle Matthews to the bottom as there's contact there between Dylan Young and John Art. And they're about to encounter another machine. That's the 11 of James Richardson, it appears. Look out. Collard going to get the better line, the outside line around Richardson, and that's going to slingshot him to the race lead. Got more traffic ahead. Cole Baker there, Benjamin Miles, the slow car of Kev Shearer. Right now we've got nine drivers up in the lead pack as Collard's going to get around Shearer, so will Matthews. Cody Smart didn't have quite as much luck as his teammate Dylan Young will go to the outside. He'll move to third, McLeod to fourth, Art to fifth, battle for the lead, it's over. Kyle Matthews takes the top spot back. And now closes in on Benjamin Miles and Cole Baker. Where's he gonna go? It looks like he's gonna go to the inside of Miles. He's gonna be able to go a little bit lower to get by Cole Baker. And with Baker going off the lead lap, that leaves us only 28 cars that are currently still on the lead lap in this race. The last car on the lead lap is the one of Trent Dunham. And there he is. It's like he's lost the draft, but he is about half a racetrack ahead of the current race leader, which right now is Kyle Matthews, and now is Joshua Collard. Joshua Collard currently in a pretty good Rookie of the Year battle with Jordan Anderson, R.J. Reynolds, Elijah Gilbert, Shane Lake. Right now, Anderson is the rookie points leader by one point over Collard, three points over Reynolds and Gilbert, and four points over Shane Lake. And even Benny Watson isn't completely out of it. He may be sixth in the uh, rookie points, but he's only 
nine points out of the points lead. So it's still really close amongst our six rookies. Speaking of close, how about a close four wide battle for the lead? Gonzalez goes way to the bottom. He's gonna move to the race lead. Now notice that one of these race cars is not in the lead. That's the 08 of Leon Alvarez. He is currently off the lead lap, trying to get back onto the tail end of the lead lap, but apparently it's up to speed. So he could definitely be a factor in the outcome of this race if he's in the lead pack in the closing stages. Here comes that second pack of race cars now. Looks like Cole Baker and Benjamin Miles are also up to speed now that they are merged with a pack. But here comes the second group led by Chris Dodd. Dodd, Galligan, McIntyre, Swrigley, Anderson, Charles Sanford's in this group, along with Keith Batson, Manuel Hartnett, JT Bryant, and just barely tailing this lead pack is, or tailing this group of cars is Daniel Gilbert, Tim Walsh, and RJ Reynolds. And now Chris Dodd has caught up to this group, and we've got a big pack of race cars again up here at the front of the field. New race leader is going to be Joshua Sakuli in the 73. And now the pit stops begin. With about nine laps to go, the green flag pit stops begin. Alex Drayden, one of last week's winners, is the first one in, followed by John Arndt, Kyle Matthews, Chris Dodd, Levi McIntyre. Now we're going to see whose pit crew is going to step up and deliver the pit stop that really is going to matter into who's going to win this race. Teammates now 1-2, Cody Smart, Dylan Young. I wonder who from this lead group is going to come to pit road this time, or is anyone going to risk it and stay out an extra lap? It's like Cody Smart, Collard, McLeod, Fitzwater, the lap car of Alvarez, Brandon Gonzalez, they're all in. But three drivers decide to stay out. Young, Galligan, and Sakuli. So they're going to go one extra lap. Dylan Young going to lead that lap. Did anybody else stay out is the question. Doesn't look like it. Looks like it's those, those three that we're waiting on. The heck happened there? Seven car disappeared for a moment. That was weird. About to catch Trent Dunham, who I believe is still on the tail end of the lead lap, merging just ahead of the race leaders. We're going to have to get around him to be able to get to the inside to get to pit road. The like Galligan's going to lose a little bit of ground to the top two when they hit pit lane. Dylan Young is in. Galligan is in. Sakuli's going to stay out another lap. Now this is not exactly wise strategy on the part of Sakuli with the fact he's going to be out there running this extra lap by himself. Definitely going to be a much slower lap time than if he had somebody behind him drafting him. He had been able to merge with a group of race cars like the group that's ahead of him, that'd have been one thing, but he's all by his lonesome. So this may cost him some track position when he comes to pit road. I'm also looking to see the battle that's going on on the uh, underneath third place from fourth on back, because I think that's what's going to cycle around to be our potential race for the lead when the pit stops cycle. And it looks like Cody Smart in the 12 is where we're going to have to look. So Cooley is on pit road now, so let's find that bright yellow Velveeta Ford. There he is. He's not going to get the race lead away. His teammate Dylan Young got off pit road ahead of him. So right now, that would cycle around as the battle for the race lead between Dylan Young and Cody Smart. It all depends now on where Joshua Sakuli comes out in relation to these two. They're going to split the Daytona 500 winner, Dallas McIntosh, three wide. What if it does come down to teammates? Dylan Young's already got a win this season. However, Cody Smart does not. So would Dylan Young be willing to push a teammate to the win so that way Young Motorsports has a chance of two drivers making it into the playoffs? Or does Dylan Young want to go for it himself, get his second win of the season, and maybe join Alex Drayden as a potential locked-up driver in the playoffs this season? Of course, last year was the first time in his career that Dylan Young made it into the playoffs and made his way into the Final Four to compete for the championship. There you saw them bypass the 73 of Joshua Sakuli, so... 
Zaccoli did lose some pretty valuable track position staying out that extra lap and running by himself. Now the question is, can anybody catch the top duo right now? Teammates out of Young Motorsports. There is Sakuli in third, Galligan fourth. Fifth place right now, Brandon Gonzalez with sixth place Fitzwater. These two are creating some pretty good speed. And now they're going to merge here with Galligan and Sakuli. So these four, can they make enough speed to catch these two? Dylan Young and Cody Smart nose to tail. They make their way by Kyle Keith. And we'll keep an eye on our ticker on the top left of your screen of whether the gap from second to third closes up or increases with a little more than four laps remaining in this race. They work their way by Benny Watson. Looks like we got more drivers in this lead pack now. Tim Walsh, Jordan Anderson, and Joseph Springley. So this group is going to produce a lot more speed, but they got to get around the slower machines as well as efficiently as Dylan Young and Cody Smart did. Watson and Keith, where are they going to go? Keith is going to kind of blockade them up there, and they're going to go four wide. Jordan Anderson's going to get by all of them. And that's going to hurt the progress of this group. See, the issue for them is they're racing double wide, three wide. It's making it a lot more difficult for them to maneuver around traffic. Meanwhile, the top two, they're both single files. So if Dylan Young makes a move, Cody Smart can follow him, and they can make an easy pass on a driver that they're trying to lap. Dylan Young comes into this race 17th in the point standings. Cody Smart right behind him, 18th in points. So both of them going to leave with a good points day, regardless of who finishes first and who finishes second. But that win is so important with the playoff system that we have. And that gap has certainly increased by another two seconds. It's now five seconds between those two and third place, currently Sean Galligan. Now Johnny Gardner is a ways ahead. So right now there's nothing but clean racetrack between third and second. Do they have enough time with two and a half laps to close up five seconds to be able to contend for the race win? With the speeds I've been seeing, I think that's possible. They just need to kind of hope they can get to Dylan Young and Cody Smart before they get to the slower machine of Johnny Gardner. Two laps to go. It was 5.3 seconds the gap this time it actually increased that surprises me because I know the 2 and the 12 are running nose to tail but still I thought that that other pack would have produced more speed look at Cody Smart oh this may cost him he tried to get a little cute there and go three wide for the race lead but had to slow up because of Johnny Gardner and that might cost him He'll have one more shot, I think, at Dylan Young. If he can get back in the slipstream of the two, he'll get a good run, and he'll have to make the move then. The problem for Cody is he doesn't have any drafting help to propel him past the two. So he'll have to rely on the slingshot. One lap to go. Does Cody Smart have anything for his teammate? For Cody Smart, it's a chance to get into the playoffs. For Dylan Young, it's a chance to be confirmed in the playoffs. Cody Smart closing the gap. He'll have a nice run here down the back straightaway. Will he do anything with the momentum? Oh, he's close. He keeps closing, but I don't know if he's going to have enough time. He's going to have to make the move right here into this corner if he's going to have any ghost of a chance. And he's not really close enough to make the move. He's trying to get closer, trying to get closer. Can he dip low here, just barely out of this corner? Not enough time. He's not going to be able to get there. Dylan Young is going to get his second win of the season. He'll take the checkered flag here tonight at Bump Drafting Super Speedway. 1-2 finish for Young Motorsports. And Dylan Young, with that victory, may have joined Alex Drayden as a confirmed driver that will be competing this season for the Hershey's Cup Series Championship. Waiting for the drivers to all cross the start-finish line so the standings will be official. Dylan Young, who last season 
went to victory lane three times during the course of 36 races. We've only run nine races this year, and he's already got a two in the win column. This guy could be en route to maybe picking up another three win year, maybe four wins. Who knows? Definitely a lot of momentum on their side, as I believe now the standings should be official for this race. Not a super exciting finish as that green flag pit stop and a lot of slower traffic kind of split the field up, but some great racing early on, and I think this is definitely a track they'll be coming back on the schedule. So Dylan Young gets the win, Cody Smart there in second, nobody around them as it was almost five seconds back to third place finishing Tim Walsh, but his consistent finishes continue on here. Joseph Srigley's going to bring it home there in fourth, and rookie of the race is going to be Jordan Anderson, so he'll continue to lead the rookie point standings. Joshua Sakuli there in sixth. Seventh was Joshua Collard. Remember, he was 20 points behind Dylan Poti coming into this race. He finishes, looks like, uh, 12 points or 12 positions ahead of Poti, so he'll cut down Poti's points lead to at least less than 10 points heading into next week at Kansas. Brandon Gonzalez will finish in eighth. Zachary Fitzwater ninth, and Sean Galligan completes your top 10. Then you had. James McLeod, Chris Dodd, R.J. Reynolds, Kyle Matthew, Alex Drayden, your top 15, your top 20 completed by J.T. Bryant, John Art, Keith Batson, Dylan Poteet, and Emmanuel Hartnett. Anthony McCurry was the last driver to finish on the lead lap in 28th. Everybody else behind him finished off the lead lap. Cole Baker, Leon Alvarez, James Richardson, Benjamin Miles, Elijah Gilbert, Gardner, Keith McIntosh, Watson, Shelton, Shearer, all due to uh, crash damage for the most part. Blaine Keyes actually finished out of the race. I didn't know that he was retired out in 5th. And also out of the race with the cars of Cat Batson and Daniel Voiles. So that is going to do it here tonight from Bump Draft and Super Speedway. Hope you guys enjoyed tonight's race. If you did, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, become part of the crew today. We have shown you full page results. These are your rookie points and your overall points heading into... Next week, where all three series will be back to go racing at the mile and a half speedway of Kansas. Until then, though, I've been Seth Cole, and you've been watching a production of the NCAA, Offline Racing at its best.